Welcome back to the Classical Architecture Workshop. I'm Professor Brandon Rowe, and in this next video we'll continue our drawing from the previous. We'll be looking at the Ionic Order, and specifically how to draw the column capital. As we've noted in the past, we are using the American Vignola, a guide to the making of classical architecture by William Ware, and the Ionic Order is the uh, right there in the middle of the five uh, classical orders. As we've discussed in uh, previous videos, the Ionic order is unique in that it has these scroll-like features on the column capital itself, um, and we call these volutes. So as we think about uh, contemplating how to draw this column capital, there's a couple of things that I'm going to be referring to in the tutorial video. Um, for one, there is uh, this detail here on the right hand side. Uh, this is a diagram of the eye of the volute. And so the, at the very center of the volute, um, you have this circular element and um, you uh, subdivide this. I'll explain that in the uh, video in a little bit more depth. Um, but if you are drawing the uh, right side volute, um, your obviously the spiral is going moving in a clockwise direction, and so the path that you are going to take, um, you'll essentially follow these numbers going from one, two, three, four and then go in another square to 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And you'll be doing this in a cascading uh, method to create the, um, the spirals that are uh, diminishing um, as they uh, come into the center there. Um, and so we'll be exploring that in a little bit more uh, detail as we uh, go go forward and actually do this drawing. So here's a preview to the finished drawing that we're going to complete. Um, once again, in the previous video, we drew specifically the ionic base, so that bottom half of the drawing there on the right. And in this drawing, we're going to focus our attention on the top half, um, where we learn how to draw those volutes, um, some of the ornament, the various moldings, etc., and how to proportion those. And then on the left-hand side, you have those diagrams that we were just referring to, um, the volute eye diagrams. Um, and so uh, we'll be referring to that and exploring that in a little bit more detail in the tutorial. Let's get started. All right, with this next tutorial video, as we get started, you're going to want your architectural scale with you, uh, your rolling ruler, just as we've used in the past. Uh, you're going to want a 45 degree triangle. You're going to need a compass of sorts, a writing utensil, and, you know, if you really want a larger uh, a 90 degree angle, kind of a builder's square. So we'll be using these tools as we construct the Ionic Capital. Okay, so as we get started here, this is a continuation of our first video that we started earlier with the Ionic base of the column. So in this next video, we're going to focus primarily on the column capital itself. So as we get started here, there's a couple of things that you're going to note. Um, on this side of my page here, I've got two diagrams. We'll get to these in a little bit uh, later in the video on how they actually work. But one of them is situated to help us draw the right volute. So the one on the right hand side. So the volute as a reminder is that scroll looking spiral thing. Um, and then on the left-hand side, we'll be using this diagram um, to, to 
uh, create that. And we'll walk through that once we get to that point. Okay, so the first thing up as we get started here, uh, so just as we did with the original drawing here, our D, our diameter of our column at the base, is uh, 3 inches equals a foot. So we've got our 3 inches equals a foot scale. And we're going to continue with that scale. Um, in the previous video, we created this uh, large graphic scale here, over here on the side, just marking out what D actually was. Um, and so that, that's helpful for us as we then create some smaller graphic scales to subdivide and uh, break up the different individual pieces and the parts. So with that, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create the top of our column. So we're going to use a 90 degree angle. Make sure that's lined up there. Strike that across the top. We're going to bring that all the way over. Um, so that is going to be the top of our column capital. Now, um, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to bring across this mark that we created for D here on the bottom. And this graphic scale, we're going to subdivide this into a half first. So just as we did here on the bottom, D over 2. Let me make sure this is uh, focused in here, folks. Okay. All right. So if I grab my 3-inch scale here, place this on this, 3 inch equals a foot, I'm going to put a mark here on the 6-inch line. So that's going to be our first graphic scale. So that should really be an inch and a half down from the top. So we're going to call this D over 2. That's one half D. We're going to use our rolling ruler and create another graphic scale here on the top. And we're just going to line it up with this one that we created on the bottom, D over 6. So for this first line, I'm going to do this line just in this upper portion here, um, that half of D. Pull this down eighth of an inch. Create that next little part of the graphic scale there. Got it. Okay, from there, we're going to go ahead and create another graphic scale. So I go if I go ahead and just pull my rolling ruler down again... Um, this one, we can go ahead and just strike it through this, this whole area of one half D for now. Pull down eighth of an inch, strike another one, and there we go. Okay, so with that, this next area here, uh, we're going to split D into six parts. So, uh, well, excuse me, half of D into six parts. So D would essentially be in 12 parts. So into six parts here. And I'm going to use my triangle here. To carry down these lines crossed here. All right, so to split this into six equal parts, I'm going to use my three inch scale. And you can see already that, you know, it, it, it's either going to line up on the six, the zero and the six, or the six and the twelve. And so it's already subdivided for me, so I just need to make a tick mark at each of these major lines here. All 
Oops, I'm putting one too many. Just realized that. Well, we can go back and erase that in just a moment. I was making it so that there was uh, 12. Um, So really, it should look more like this now. I've got three on either side. We don't need 12 divisions, we need six. My apologies. Okay, so there is our six divisions. Um, now, on this next graphic scale that we're going to create, uh, we are going to create uh, a number of subdivisions uh, within each of these. So each of these six that we just created, we're going to subdivide each of them into three additional parts. So one way to help us uh, accomplish this is if we uh, go ahead and uh, use our triangle here. We could drag a couple of these lines across of those six divisions we just created. This will help us get a baseline. Okay, almost there. And actually, um, here on the bottom, uh, this one, we actually won't be subdividing that one. So we can actually shorten that if we need to, wanted to. Just erase that part. So in this one, we are going to have three divisions, um, uh, three going all the way up. But one way of viewing it is that we've got three here on the top, and then here in the middle I've got nine, and then I've got three on the bottom. And we'll show you uh, the reason for that in just a minute. But there is one important thing here that we want to point out. Um, when we were drawing the simplified block order, and we drew the column capital, uh, we essentially only had it be one-third of D. Um, and because of that, uh, we said, you know, the overall capital is actually a little bit larger than one-half D. So if this is half, uh, D over two or one-half D, the, call, the volutes will actually dip down below this. We'll see that in just a moment. Um, but that one-third, um, that was a critical part for us. So this area right here, so if we go down four from the top here, um, this is an important line. So we're going to carry that line across so you can kind of connect the dots on why we put that one third earlier on in that simplified drawing. So that one third of the capital, that is going to become the center line for where that volume, that spiral, is centered off of. So this diagram that we've got here, that center point, as we just drew that horizontal line, um, that is going to line up with that. Now, to get this vertical line, we are actually going to just pull up each of the sides of the column. Um, instead of just doing a, a straight line, we're going to do a dash line on that. So. Let's go ahead and line this up. Okay. I'm going to dash that. And we're going to go all the way actually to the very top of the column itself.
and that's going to be an important part for us uh, to do some other measurements off of. So that will be helpful for us. So this right here, this intersection is essentially the center point. Um, this spot right here, blown up, um, of the what we call the eye of the volute. So that's going to be helpful for us in just a moment. So let's go ahead and do that on the right hand side as well. Remember we are putting in a dashed line on each of these. Okay, so now we've got the center points of our eye of our volutes um, delineated. So that's that's an important thing to, to note. Um, okay, so now that we've got that, let's go back and subdivide these elements. Uh, we kind of got distracted there for just a minute. So we're going to use our one inch scale, the one with the big one on it. And we're going to use that so that we can then subdivide each of these divisions into three parts. Um, so you're going to see here that automatically each of these divisions, uh, each essentially quarter of an inch, can be subdivided into three. So if I go ahead and make a mark on those main tick marks. And now I'm going to slide this down to that bottom one. And there we go. That gives us a good basis for um, some of the things that we're going to be pulling across here. Uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, uh, we are going to go ahead. You may recall when we were drawing that simplified uh, version of the block ionic order up here at the neck of the column it gets more skinny than the original width that D dimension so up here at the top we actually uh, went down to 5 6 D and so we're going to create here a, um, a little graphic scale similar to the one that we created here on the bottom um, for that 5 6 D and to do that, we are going to, first off, just create a couple of horizontal lines for that graphic scale. Just like that. And I'm going to make sure that this uh, center line, I know where that is in relation to this graphic scale. So just as we did here on the bottom, if we divide D into six parts, it actually equates to a half inch each. So we're going to use our half inch scale. Yep, there we go. And so if first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place this one with all the teeth mark there on the center of it. Uh, because with five, I've got an odd number, so one has to be centered here in the middle. So there's that center one. Now I can go ahead and put two on one side and two on the other side to give me five. So if I bring down the zero, the one, two, three, the four, and then the fifth and final one. Okay, so the nice thing that we can do now is we can pull down um, those lines uh, because that will become the side for my column. So I'm going to use my rolling ruler. I'm going to get uh, make sure I'm centered off of the side here. 
So on this part, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, take this line down to the top of the column, and then I'm going to dash it through this area here. Um, and then when I get uh, just um, a little bit uh, right at the bottom of where this 3 is going to be pulled across here, I'm going to just transition to a solid line. Obviously, when um, if this was the full column, this would actually have some emphasis on it, so it would actually bow out a little bit. But just for convenience sake, we're not going to do that in this tutorial. Okay, once again, take that line down to the top. And then I'm going to dash it until I get beyond that uh, third little division there. And then have it go straight on me. So it will look something like that when you're done. And I better make sure that is straight. It looked like something happened. Like my ruler got moved a little bit. Yeah, it did slightly. Okay. Some of these small little things can lead up to large inaccuracies, so we try to be careful as we go through the drawing process there. Okay, so now that we've got that part there, now we can go ahead and start pulling across some of these molding lines with these divisions that we just created. So the first off is we're going to pull this top line over. So that first division of three, we're going to pull over that first little tick mark. So the first third of that. So go ahead and use your ruler to get lined up on the side there. We're going to pull that across. So what that is going to serve as is our, um, our little fillet at the very top of the column as it goes to transition back um, to the entablature. Okay, so once we've got that, um, and I'm going to erase these two lines here. Um, because my graphic scale doesn't necessarily need to extend beyond there. But in order to get um, the extension of this fillet, the vertical line of it, um, it is going to extend out 1 18th D. So we've gone ahead and, and done the math for you there. Um, but what that equates to with the scale that we're drawing at is 3 sixteenths of an inch. So if we pull out our 3 sixteenths inch scale here, and I go ahead and take that, place it on the edge of the bottom column as that line is taken up um, all the way to the top. And if we go over 3 sixteenths of an inch, from that line, that will be the edge of our molding. So that is going to be the extent of um, the column capital at this point. We'll do the same thing on this other side. Take that over, 3 sixteenths of an inch. And we will actually extend this up on both sides. I'm going to create a little dimension stringer here. And we will label this 1 over 18 D. 1 18th the diameter. Do the same on this side. Take that across. 1 over 18 D. Okay. Perfect. 
All right, this next part that we're going to do is we're going to take a cross, and for this we'll use our triangle again. So we did this first third one. Now we're going to go down to where that main division uh, was for the thir three, and we're going to take that line across. And what this is going to become is the bottom of our abacus. So if we take this line across here, there we go. And so that abacus is actually going to start here at the bottom. And you may recall with our moldings um, that we learned about early on is that this is what we call a sima reversa because you have the weight of the entablature then pushing down on this abacus, this top part of the ionic capital. And so it's going to actually appear that it's bulging out. So the sima reversa, as you may recall, um, starts out it bulges out and then comes down to a point. Um, and if this is that top part of it. Um, with this abacus, it actually tucks in underneath just a little bit. Um, and so it's, it's slightly a little bit different. But we'll go ahead and draw this in. And where it starts from the bottom is right at this intersection here. And it's going to stop here at this 118th D. So if I, I'm just going to eyeball this. So if I have it just like we did there, it's going to bow out and come down. So just like that. We'll do the same thing on this other side, the mirror image of it. Start from the bottom this time going to come up and then bow out at the top just like that okay great so now we've got our abacus so we can go ahead and label this um, we'll just label this on this side so e excuse me a b a uh, C-U-S, abacus. Perfect. So um, the next thing that we are going to do here is that uh, I of the volume itself, it is also 1 18th D, that same dimension that we did up here. And so we're going to center that uh, right on that intersection, um, that center line where the eye is centered. So this is the larger diagram. So if we're creating uh, a square here, what it's going to look like is um, this extent is going to be 1 18th D by 1 18th D. So if we use our ruler or scale, take our 3 16th inch, And we're going to mark this on uh, both sides. We're going to take that down to this other intersection down here. Mark that. And then we're going to flip it and then get the reverse. Let's do the same on this one. Okay. Uh, we're just going to kind of eyeball this and complete the square here. So 
So we're essentially creating a square that is centered on um, on that, those center lines, the center line of the eye that we just were talking about. Okay. So, um, before we dive into actually drawing the volutes themselves, let's go ahead and pull across some of these old, other uh, molding profiles that we've got here. Uh, the, the first one that we are going to uh, pull across is if we use our triangle and we come down from that one that we just created a minute ago, uh, we're going to come down one, little tick mark there. Take that across. What that is going to serve as is uh, in uh, in the ionic uh, capital itself, uh, there is a little fillet that follows the edge of the spiral, and uh, so this is that thickness of that fillet on the top portion of it. So that is that first one. Um, the next one that we're going to bring down, um, which is going to be the thickness of what is called the channel that's going to follow that. Um, so if we go down another three from the one that we just created, or if we view this as uh, from the original divisions here, three, six, we're going down to the seventh line from the top. And we're going to take this line across. And that is going to be that channel, uh, that thickness there. Um, so we can actually write here, we'll just label this um, uh, since we're here. So the channel. And then the fillet is right above it. Okay, so we've got those in, in place. All right, so from there, at now if we go below the channel, um, the next element that we're going to have um, as we're coming up here is we've got uh, what is called the echinus. Um, it's essentially uh, a quarter round molding and it follows along here. And so usually uh, underneath this uh, channel area, you'll have a molding that curves under a quarter round. Um, and that's where you'll find egg and dart uh, ornament uh, decor on there. And so we're gonna go ahead and um, get the bottom of that. Um, the other thing I should have mentioned, you know, when we were originally marking out this 118th D here, uh, these lines actually line up with that, um, these uh, divisions that we've got here on the side. And so if you wanted to, you could draw those in lightly um, as well, uh, just as a reminder there on both the top and the bottom. So let's see here. Just make sure we're lining up. Okay, I think that's right. I think that's just helpful to see in general that um, these divisions here uh, were able to still get us that same 118th D for the center or the eye of the volutes. All right, so now that we've got that, this bottom, at the very bottom of this uh, division here, we're gonna take this across and we'll show you why in just a moment here. But let's make sure we got this lined up. 
Okay, let's take that across. All right. So now as we begin to look at some of these things, the important thing that we're going to create um, before we kind of move on, we want to create this whole side profile here. Um, and what it's going to reveal to us is kind of what's happening here in the middle um, and beyond. And so um, to do that, uh, we are going to create uh, another horizontal line just above this one. Um, that's going to be a fillet uh, that we're going to have. Um, so if we're going up from the bottom, we've already got this bottom one marked off here. Um, and so we're going to have a transition. Uh, that reverse conge, just as we did on the bottom, um, that's going to be here at the top. But before we do that, we're going to go up one of those marks from the bottom. Make sure we are lined up. Okay, perfect. So we've already measured this uh, one, um, excuse me, this, uh, the eye of our uh, volute. And so if we were to take that line down here until it gets to this bottom line right there, that is going to be the straight part of our fillet on uh, both sides here. And so if that was to then, uh, if we were to create a 45 there, we'll go ahead and just do that. Actually, this way. Coming off of where that column is coming up and intersecting at this point. And we take a 45 down and dash this down. That becomes the center point for my circle. So if I put my compass there, right there, and put it up to the top and strike an arc, since it's so small, we're just going to do that by hand. Um, but that is what is happening beyond, okay? On this side, you know, if we did the same exact thing, this one is not going to be revealed because uh, what we're going to do is when we draw the volume, it actually covers that. Um, but just wanted you to see what's happening then on this side. So once we've got that fillet that goes up one, um, what's going to happen then is we have a, um, a right in between the echinus and the ast and the fillet is what we call an astragal, and the astragal is going to be half of a uh, diameter um, molding. And the bottom of that is going to be right here at the center of the eye. So this will be the top, and this will be the bottom. And if we're just creating a half circle there between those, that is what that molding is going to look like as it's coming across. Now, for the actual echinus, the echinus is the quarter round that we talked about earlier. So if we're to dash this up until it gets to the bottom of the channel here. And 
and we go ahead and use our compass for this one. I'm going to adjust this compass. And it's going to start at the bottom, excuse me, at the top of that astragal that we just created. So this is that area. And if we strike an arc, quarter round, just till it hits the top, well, excuse me, the bottom of the channel, there. That is going to be our molding. And then this is going to come all the way back to where that center point of the circle was. And this is going to come up vertically and then slightly have a small conge similar to this one. That pops out. The fillet is going to come straight up and then there's going to be a little lip there, a straight, before it hits to the cyma reverse or the abacus. So that is what you should be seeing in profile view. And they're not coming across. Okay. So um, this uh, center, uh, excuse me. Um, we originally uh, marked off this center line of where the bottom of that was. We can actually get rid of that because that abacus will just be a half round coming across. And usually you'll see a bead and dart molding uh, that goes along there. Um, but that gives you an idea of what's what's taking place. All right, so now we've got we've got a good basis for our column capital here. So a couple of things um, as we start to draw the volute, the spiral that comes in. There's a couple of things that we need to go over um, before we uh, begin that process. The first is this diagram over here on the left hand side is the diagram that we'll be following as we go ahead and draw this um, volute, the right volute I. So as you're thinking about it, this volute is coming down, it's spiraling in, and so that movement is a clockwise movement. And so this diagram, as we begin drawing it, you'll see that I've got numbers here. The numbers start out on the edge. They go one, two, three, four, then they go in a little bit. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And so it's this clockwise movement. Each of these points is critical because it's going to be the center point for my compass. As I take that compass up and strike it down, um, this will then uh, take my compass and strike it around. And you'll use each of these points to essentially create uh, roughly a quarter uh, turn as you're going around. So to create this diagram, uh, you need to do a couple of things. First off, here within our uh, circle, we're going to place the, uh, our, excuse me, our square diagonal lines to put an X in the box. And I know this is uh, getting a little small, so I want you to view it kind of over here on this larger diagram. So we're putting essentially this X in the box. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a diamond within a box or a square rotated by 45 degrees. I'm just eyeballing this to create this diagram. Uh, then once I've got that square here, I need to subdivide that square into three equal parts. So I've got one, 
2, and 3 from the center line over to the side. And what that is doing, and because it gets so small in here, I am really just going to kind of eyeball this for my 1, 2, 3 divisions. Uh, because what we are creating is essentially three smaller squares. So you can see here on this diagram, I didn't do the extra subdivisions. Um, but that square, if we subdivide it into three, half of it, then we can get an outer square, a middle square, and then a center square. Um, so I've got three squares um, as they uh, emanate out of that. Okay, so once I've got that, um, I'm going to go into this in, in just a minute, these other divisions, but we're not going to do that right, right away. Um, so first off, if I am following my diagram here, I'm going to put the center of my compass on this point. So that first square, um, that is going to be the center point. So I'm putting it there on that little diagram. I know it's hard to see. And then I'm going to take this up to my fillet at the top here. Um, and then I'm going to strike an arc that is going to come down till just a little bit about a quarter of a turn. Okay, something just about like that. That is our first step of drawing the ionic. Um, and just to illustrate this point really quickly, I'm going to show you an, a, a larger diagram of what this is actually looking like. So this is doing the left volume, so uh, just think of it in the reversed. But here is our little square diagram that we talked about. So if we were doing the left, right this is the number one here so this one right here we're stretching up our compass up to the top of that fillet and we are striking it down a quarter of a turn then we are going to put the center of our compass at number two over here on this side stretch our compass strike that down a quarter of a turn then we are placing our compass on the number three here in the bottom taking that down to that next line striking that around for a quarter of a turn and then we are going to the number four and then stretching our compass again striking that and then repeating the process so then we would go to the number five uh, the number 5 to 6, 7, 8. So we would repeat that, those radius, as we keep going uh, further into the circle. Um, and then finally on to 9, 10, 11, and 12 as it comes back to that circle, the I of the volute. All right. All right. So a couple of things here that we're going to look at um, doing. Um, when we are creating the volute itself, it is going to spiral around here. When we're especially working on the right volute, it's going to spiral spiral around in a clockwise fashion. Um, but it is going to eventually tuck right into um, uh, this. Uh, so if this channel is following around, it's going to tuck right underneath that channel uh, where we've got our echinus um, with our egg and dart molding. So it's going to come back and hit into that line. So we're going to do a little bit of some uh, reverse engineering, if you will, uh, to make sure we are on track. So we're going to start here at this 
number four, since that is the one, the circle that is going to tie into the top uh, part of, excuse me, the bottom part of the channel. So we're going to put our compass here and adjust it. So that we are making this connection. All right. Let's bring this around. And usually we want it to be parallel with that, uh, where the, the center of the compass is. Okay, so now we are going to adjust this. We're going to go to the number three. So kind of the reverse order here. Stretch it out, go down a quarter of a turn so it's perpendicular to the compass. Um, now we're going to go back up to number two. And since this one is going to be that critical step that connects these two, we want to be really careful about how that is coming into play. Okay, here we go. And you can see we've got a little bit of a slight overlap there on the bottom, but that is pretty, pretty darn close um, for our volute. So usually, you know, if this was a larger scale, you would continue in that clockwise. You'd start with the one, right, with this first uh, quarter of a turn. You would go to the number two over here, strike this down to the number three strike that curve, then to the number four, and strike that. Um, we did it just in the reverse order, just to make sure that we were fitting um, underneath the channel and within the echinus itself. So now as we go to the number five here, uh, it's similar to the number one, right? We go back to the starting point, but we subdivided uh, this uh, square into three parts similar to this diagram that we've got here and so if I take this to that number five position readjust my compass Take that down a quarter of the way. Then I will move over to number six. that down to there so I'll let you see what's happening um, then we're going to go down to number seven readjust my compass it's starting to get pretty darn small and then finally over to number eight center of my uh, compass 
move slightly. All right, and then from number eight, you're going to go pretty close to the center, 9, 10, 11, and 12, until this wraps around the original eye of the volute. And you can see here I am at the peak of my uh, compass, so the rest of the way I am going to have to eyeball this. So if I went from uh, now number 10 to number 11, And then finally to number 12, which is right there as that circle, the eye of um, the volute. So to draw then um, the fillet as it goes around in there as well, uh, we would follow that same pattern. So now, if you are subdividing each of those three parts into another thir three parts, and that first third is what you're going to be drawing. So you're going to start at A, B, C, D, E, F, and moving your way back into the center. Um, for our purposes, I am going to just hand draw this because it's getting very tight. And what's going to happen with this volute as it starts spiraling inwards, it starts getting a little bit more slender. proportionally until it eventually comes back into the eye. Make this some of these lines a little bit darker so you can see this. And be patient with yourself. Um, you're bound to not get it right the first try to go around here. Um, because this volute is actually hiding this transition molding, right? Um, we're going to just erase that so that we can actually see. That full channel kind of uninterrupted, if you will, and it's uh, fillet molding as it spirals in towards the center. Come back in here, darken up some of these lines. Okay. And there we have one of our two volutes. Um, for this second one, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify it uh, so we can still see these moldings beyond. Um, and so just as we did on this side with the eye, we're going to do that same process on this other side. So we're going to make an X within that little square there. And then we're going to create this diamond shape, right? A square rotated 45 degrees. 
so we can have a basis to do this other side. So since we are only doing that outer circle part, what we'll do, we'll actually start at the number four here, uh, work our way from that uh, bottom of the channel outward until we come back and hit uh, the top of the fillet. So if I put my compass here, center here, at the number four mark, and just a reminder, right, this is a clockwise movement if you were to do the whole thing for the left side. Adjusting the compass so that it hits more or less right there at the top of the echinus and at the bottom of the channel. We'll go a quarter of a turn. We'll readjust ourselves. We're going to go to the number three. quarter of the way down then we are going to go to the number two just our compass again And then finally to the number one. And this one we're going to be really careful as we measure this because we're going to want it to line up with this arc as well as the top here of the fillet. So we might do some minor course corrections here or there. Once again, if we were doing this at a much larger scale, then we wouldn't run into some of these problems. Okay, so there we go. We've got our ionic order with our two volutes. Um, the last thing that we're going to do here, we're going to add some of these labels that we may have missed early on. Um, so uh, first off, we've got uh, the astragal. So we've got the astragal there. Um, right above that, this area we talked about earlier, that is the echinus. Um, we're just going to add this label here. E-C-H-I-N-U-S, echinus. We're also going to uh, label that um, uh, this area on both sides, this is actually the center line of the eye of the volute. And then this direction is also the center line of the volume, uh, excuse me, of the eye. And from that center line up to the top, we're going to uh, create a dimension stringer. So I'm going to use my triangle here. From the 
the top. I'm going to put this out just a little ways here. And uh, this dimension, right, from the top of the column is at one third D, just as we drew in our simplified ionic block order. And our I. And I think we'll do this on this side since we've got our lines here. So our I of our volute, just as we uh, measured from up here, is 1 over 18 D. And we will label this as the I of the volute. And we'll just erase that center line there just to make sure that that is clear. What that I dimension is. Up here at the top, our overall column width is 5 6 D that we talked about earlier. We've got our abacus, our fillet, our channel labeled. And uh, lastly, uh, we'll just add a note here. The volute itself is right here. So if I was to emphasize some of these moldings, right, I've got this fillet here before we get to the astragal. I might darken that one up just to emphasize that here on the side. I'll also darken uh, the astragal itself. On both the top and bottom. And I will also do this top part, the top of the echinus. So just like that. So I know some of those were a little bit light earlier. We can go ahead and thicken some of those up. There we go. Now we've got our side profile that we're seeing uh, basically in section here. Uh, we're seeing the full volute on this side here. Um, and then the only other thing that, you know, usually you'll see in the ionic order is that you'll have the egg and dart motif. Um, usually, according to uh, William Ware's version of American Vignola describes it as three eggs. So you'll have one right there in the center. Um, you'll have a, a dart in between them. And then you will have a, an additional egg here. on both the left and right sides. And the egg and dart has uh, kind of these two layers to it, uh, usually. And then we've got 
another dart here on the side. And then we have this little element. Usually it's added um, so that it can help accommodate what is happening there in the corner as that molding, this echinus molding, starts wrapping around um, and hits the eye, uh, the volute itself. So that gives you roughly some of the ornament, um, but on the astrical itself, uh, right below here, this is where we actually have um, a lot of the bead and reel um, moldings that take place. And so I'll go ahead and just draw that really quickly um, as well, just for your convenience to understand what's, what's typically happening. Um, it's usually centered underneath these egg and, egg and darts. And then you've got two beads here on either side as that comes over into the corner. So something along those lines in terms of your ornament. Obviously it's going to be a little bit thinner um, because this is going onto a profile. But that, my friends, um, is the Ionic order. So thank you for joining us for drawing the column base earlier and now finishing up the Ionic capital. Hopefully that makes sense. Be patient with yourselves as you're trying to go through this diagram um, for the right and left sides. Um, it can be tricky and at the scale that we're drawing it uh, with our compass, it, it can also uh, create some challenges here and there. But I have confidence in all of you that you can pull it off. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.